like these boats are about to crash into each other. Oh my god. Oh. Okay. okay. I'm Christina. We are off. And this is John. Together we just packed up our lives. Christina Castellos joins me now. Put our careers on hold to sail around Australia. Oh, this is magic. Sail your boat under the bridge. Into Kana, a 50-foot Janot Sun Odyssey. Yay! She needed some work, but now we're ready. We're going through the heads. For the real adventure to begin. Oh, no. <laughs> if you're new here, welcome and thanks for joining our crew. We're so close to starting our voyage. On this episode, we've jam-packed it with all our final preparations before the worst possible news broke. I want to commend the Victorian government and the acting premier. Really just wanted to give you an idea of what the boat looks like bare. We just put the staunchins back on, which is unfortunate because I would have liked to show you what it looked like naked, but I will show you now and we'll do a before and after. The barbecue has been taken off to be cleaned. No lifelines. Just put these new staunchins back on. Outside, we replaced and re-thread the new lifelines through the stanchions. They act as a fence while inside. It is an absolute peak time here. I am a little embarrassed. I wasn't going to show you guys this. <laughs> what an absolute schmozzle. These are the conditions we are currently living in. We had to take everything out of the cupboards to access and replace all those staunchion backplates. So that means all the lining is off at the moment and the place looks like a pigsty. But on a positive note... John has been organising all his tools um, and he's also done this side as well. So far we're having a productive day. We have taken the barbie off the back. The stern rail is now bare. <laughs> and we are cleaning the barbecue. It is a little filthy, but that's okay because she is going to come up a beauty. We are going to give this barbecue some love. What did you say? No, not doing more TikTok. We just packed up our entire lives. Explaining the barbecue situation because it is on. Okay. We also noticed a leak coming from the cabin top window on the starboard side, so we wanted to get this resealed as quickly as possible. At the same time, we got a call that we'd desperately been waiting for. Good news! We have to move the boat at eight o'clock, John. No sleeping in tomorrow. <laughs> Did you hear about the news this morning? The boys rocked up and I was still in my PJs. <laughs> Lucky I was wearing clothes. All right. <laughs> Bye. Good morning. Today, the mast finally goes in. Oh. John has woken me up at 7 a.m. after going to bed so late because we were getting the, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to use this. My face looks so puffy, John. I know you're just a gone away. <laughs> Sorry, the master's going in. John and I, for the very first time, took it out of its pen. We motored the boat all the way here. Finally, we've been waiting for this day for a couple of weeks at least. The mast was first, then the stays, then the boom. The back stays and the fore stay were next. While the electricians rewired the mast. 
Barney's little pet bird is hungry just while we're trying to put the mast in. <laughs> His name is Wingy. He's been through the wars, the poor chap. Once everything was attached, Takana had some adjustments in the water. Her new rigging was fine-tuned. You may notice too, there on the bow, we have a new tender. Just trying to find ourselves a tender. After looking at a few options and doing a heap of research, it was clear to us Highfield was the way to go. Our first time on our little tender. Hey, thanks for our new tender. <laughs> How do we look? Is it cedar? Oh, <laughs> be careful. Don't touch it. <laughs> See ya. We went with the Highfield Classic 290 Hyplon version. On board, we also have a six-person life raft. I found it on Facebook Marketplace. It's usually around $2,500 new. This one is only a few years old and it's in service and it's only $900. So that is a massive saving for John and I. I think it's about 38 kilos actually. That's heavy. There's also a special device we've tucked into our life jackets. So we're programming the ocean signal MOB. It tells other ships in the area if you've gone overboard. Let's other vessels know the details of the boat. And why would we use something like that? So this little gadget, if you fall overboard and the life jacket inflates, it'll set off this little signal from this unit. And it's a VHF signal which then gets transmitted along with the MMSI and the GPS location back to any vessels in the area and it will come up on the chart plotter where you are in relative to their boat so then they can find you. That's awesome. So essentially that could save our lives. In a man overboard situation it's you know if you're at night or in rough seas it's not always easy to keep an eye on the person that's in the water so this just helps you do that. No, it's flashing red. What does it say if it doesn't work? Just do it again. Is that what it says? Yeah, you just have to do the test again. Okay. Yep. Not sure if you actually have to hold it this close, but... It's so crazy that you don't even need Wi-Fi. It's like Morse code. While we're out at sea sailing, we'll also need a way to make power and recharge our batteries when the engine isn't running. And we have... Solar panels! How are you feeling, babe? Tired. What have you done? Oh, go back up. I put some solar go panels back up. up. Go back up. I put some solar panels Quickly, up. Quickly, go back up. Go back up. I put solar panels on the bimini. John, you need a haircut. <laughs> it's been two months and you look like a disheveled mess. <laughs> oh. But you're doing a great job. I mean, this isn't a fashion parade. That goes into there and now we have all the panels on here to mix it up. But see how ugly it all is? After to... too much cable, see? I was trying to cut them short and you're like, maybe let's cut some longer ones. Now I've got all this. It'll be all right. I'll just have to tidy it up. Some people said John's solar panel idea wasn't going to be good enough. But if you look at it, it could be award winning. <laughs> John's actually about to crack it, poor thing. Are you happy with what you've done? Not really, it's a bit messy, a bit rushed. So we're trying to get out of here. Winter is coming. <laughs> I don't know if that's safe, John. You've got good legs though. He's also got good skills, but our docking needs some refining. So we invested in some lessons. The trick is to go, where's the wind? What's it doing? How's it going to affect our boat? How the two of us going to park? See how much easier it is for you to see what you're doing by then. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. It's on, so swing your skirt in. Really, really good job. So God, I wanted to thank him, John. I'm really impressed, actually. I'm impressed with what's going on. <laughs> I'm very jealous of the two of you. You've got to have such a good time. Turns out, my friend Phil happened to be walking along the rock wall. How you doing? Do you want to come and see the boat? Cue his commentary. Left hand down. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Swing it around. Right hand, right hand. Yep, yep. Hook it in, hook it, hook it. Yeah. Good work, John. Backing it in. 
Christina, she's doing good too. That's it. Check out those things on the side. Oh, executed very well. Just gliding in. Perfect. When you come around, just give me a buzz. Phil, Cara, and their newborn Miller gave us a yeah, loving yeah. send off. <laughs> so exciting. Bearing <laughs> gifts. That is so nice of you. Nice. You're having a rough day, like, don't worry about it. You get past it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. It's going to get tough, like you two out there. Do this, do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah, told you to go. tie it off. <laughs> That was me like yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. I have to stay in touch and yeah, I'll be following you. I'll be your two buddy. Watch. John, you've been in here for two seconds. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You're supposed to save them for a rainy right, day. <laughs> Can't wait. Wow. Well, thanks, guys. Legends. John and I were now fully stocked and ready for our first sale together. Our Melbourne maiden sale. Yes, yes. <laughs> We celebrated with our dear friends who actually got us into sailing on a trailer sailor around six years ago. If you told me then that one day we would give it a crack and buy our own and learn the ropes, wow, forever grateful. And while we were enjoying the milestone, John's dad called. Yes, make sure you capture some videos. I'm all over it, Paul. Is filming it right now. What do you think? Um, yeah, we're just, we're the best there. What's going on there, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, that's the crew. You're going to ask them. <laughs> All right, Dad. Cheers. Catch you later. Bye. Bye. As we approached the Docklands and Melbourne City, we practised our new skills, docking. And christened that clean barbecue the following day. Our family interstate, not far away. You're in the fridge for your labour now, but it's of you. Yeah, finally. But we spoke too soon. Coming up next, we were ready to leave. I was provisioning for our huge sale when... This is so stressful. The worst possible news broke. The whole of Victoria has just been put into a seven day lockdown. The Prime Minister is about to speak, John. I want to commend the Victorian Government and the Acting Premier um, for their efforts. And we have left a note here because we don't know when we're going to see Takana again. We had one last option. 